Welcome to part 2 of the le fourth lecture of Tripoli 23 on energy and potential. In this part of the lecture, we'll be discussing or I'll be introducing to you the concept of potential and potential difference. So let's recall first then that the work done when moving charge Q from point A to point B is this expression. Okay. So let's examine that. The work from A to B is equal to negative of the charge times the line integral of your electric field to your path or differential path from point A to point B. <coughs> Excuse me. The potential difference between the two points, so let's define that, is basically just the work done by an external source, okay, which is this expression already. So that's the work done by an external source, which is this expression. In moving a one coulomb charge or a unit positive charge from one point to another in an electric field. Okay, in the presence of an electric field. Therefore, it's just basically when we want to get the potential difference between your point A and point B, okay, it's just the work from uh, A to B, sorry, from B to A divided by Q, which is this expression right here. So don't get confused when uh, dealing with work and potential, okay, because... In, re uh, in reality, your uh, subscript for work and potential are actually swapped. Okay. When you are getting the potential difference between two points A and B, you're assuming that the charge moved from B to A. <coughs> okay? The potential difference, <coughs> let me reiterate and emphasize, when we're getting the potential difference between two points A and B, or that's uh, <clears throat> represented as V sub AB. <clears throat> Excuse me. We're looking at the movement from your point B to point A. Okay? We're looking at the movement from point B to point A. So VAB is actually WBA or the work from uh, point B to point A. Divided by Q, which is equal to this expression right here. The SI unit of the potential difference, or in this case, another name for that is voltage, which you are all familiar with, is volt. And one volt is one joule per coulomb. For example, uh, given your line charge density oriented on the z-axis, okay, with linear charge density rho L, determine the potential difference between point A and point B, where we move the point <clears throat> radially inwards. Okay. Recall that the work is equal to this expression. Okay. This is the electric field due to the uh, line charge. And this is your path differential. Your differential path. And you get uh, this expression after integration. We just divide this expression by Q. You get the potential difference between your point A and point B. Okay. So that's how you get the potential difference. Now potential due to a point charge. So the point charge, recall that the electric field is this expression. We choose a differential length, d r a r hat, y. It's because these two points are actually part of a radial line, okay, which means uh, it's aligned with the origin. Okay. Therefore, the movement of the charge is just radially inwards, and therefore, it's only oriented on AR hat. So, VAB is equal to integral, okay, from point B to point A of your electric field dotted to your differential length. So, you get the dot product of this and this. This, this expression will uh, surface and integ integrate that from RB to RA, we get this expression right here. Now consider the case if the two points are not on the same line as the radius, or sorry, as, as the origin, or, or as the, uh, it's not the same line as your point charge. <clears throat> you cannot ignore these two expressions here. Okay? 
cannot ignore these two expressions because they are not aligned with AR hat. Therefore, your direction is generally along AR hat, A theta hat, and A phi hat. Okay. If you try to evaluate the potential difference, then we get the dot product of the electric field dotted to your differential length, which is now this. Okay. But if you take dot product, this will become zero. This will become zero. We're left with the original expression, and we get the same VAB. The same answer was obtained even if there's the if there's a movement along a theta and a phi. So it, that means that the potential difference between two points only depend on the position of each point from the charge. <clears throat> okay, or the distance. Sorry, the distance of each point from the point charge. This makes your potential difference path independent, okay? which kind of makes sense since this is equal to the work done from point B to point A divided by, sorry, from point B to point A divided by your charge Q. Okay? And the work is also path independent. Okay? So the, the properties of your work just kind of carries on to your voltage. Okay? So now let's define what we call the absolute potential. So okay, uh, what I mentioned earlier is the potential difference. We also have what we call an absolute potential. So um, when speaking of something like that, the absolute potential, it should be agreed beforehand that uh, what points should have a zero potential. Okay? And the most universal zero reference point is the ground okay, or the surface of the earth. And another one widely used is uh, the point in infinity. Okay. So uh, actually, this came from your. This actually kind of came from your mechanical analogy. If you have a ball resting on the ground, it has zero potential. So a ball of mass m resting on the ground, it has zero potential. Okay. If you try to lift it up and elevate it on a height h, like this. Lift it up, elevate it to a height h. It has a uh, gravitational potential energy, which makes your mass m having potential with respect to your zero potential, which is the ground. Okay, so that's why we call, some, uh, we call the node with zero potential when you're doing nodal analysis, if you recall. We call the zero potential the ground. Okay. It came from that analogy. Okay. Some note, if the potential at point A is VA and the potential at point B is VB, then the potential difference is VAB equals VA minus VB. The potential at A minus the potential at B, which makes sense. It's the potential difference. For a point charge, for a point charge, Recall, we have this expression. If VB is 0 at RB is infinity, which makes sense. This is inf uh, If we let RB be infinity, this will be 0. Then the voltage or the potential at A, sorry, the potential at A, not voltage, that's different. The potential at A is this expression. Therefore, for a point charge, the voltage uh, becomes this. So note that this uh, function of your uh, potential is, ac is actually a scalar field. has no direction. Okay. It's the result of your dot product. And work is scalar. So potential was derived from work. Therefore, uh, your potential field is actually a scalar field. If a specific zero reference is not defined, a convenient way to express is express your uh, potential field is adding a constant C1, which if you take the potential difference, actually disappears. Okay. And uh, that C1, that constant, may be selected such that your voltage is zero at a particular uh, value of R or a partic particular position R. Okay? 
With that in mind, we now go to the concept of what we call an equipotential surface. So it's actually a surface composed of all points in the same space having the same potential value. So that means if you move around that surface, if you move around that surface, it means that you uh, you don't have you don't get any potential difference. Okay. So uh, it's uh, a property of equi uh, of your equipotential surface is that it's always normal to the electric field. That means at each point on the streamline of the electric field, the equipotential surface is oriented 90 degrees to the streamline. For example, if you have an electric field moving from this point to this point in one direction, the equipotential surface is oriented uh, vertically. For a point charge, so remember that this is the expression for the uh, potential due to a point charge. If we let R constant, then V of R is also constant. Therefore, the equipotential surface for a point charge is just a sphere. A sphere of radius R. For uh, the concept of an electric dipole, this is the streamlines of the electric fields. If you plot the uh, points that is, if you plot the points that is perpendicular to the electric field, you get your equipotential surface. And at the middle of that, actually, uh, you have a straight line, which is the equipotential surface. If you have a dipole, this is normally set to zero, this equipotential surface at the middle. But anyway, it's uh, let's just discuss it. It's the property of your uh, equipotential surface to be normal to the electric field streamlines. Okay. So now let's look at a system of charges. Consider a system of charges and uh, charge Q1 at some point R1, charge Q2 at some point R2. The voltage, or sorry, the potential at your point R, which is we are replaced a test charge, is equal to V of R right here. So this is the potential at R due to R1. If there are two charges, we just add the potential of R2. So the total potential would be this expression. Okay. Now consider the case of having n discrete charges. Just need to get the sum of just need to get the sum of the char uh, the potential of individual charges along uh, the potential due to individual charges on your space. If we have a very small element like this figure, this very small charge uh, creates a potential on this region right here. And you add all that small charges along, so they also have a contribution to the potential. Okay? So you add them all up, you get your potential at this point in space. Okay. So, how do you add all that? Well, just integrate that. Integrate that if it's a volume density. Integrate that in the volume if it's a surface density. Integrate that with the surface if it's a line density. Integrate that over the line. Okay? So, that's how you get the uh, potential due to a scalar quantity. Oh, sorry. Sorry, I was thinking of another thing. That's how you get the potential of your uh, of your space given a distribution of charges. So take note, this is scalar. If you try to integrate that, it's easier than getting the voltage, right? Okay. Sorry, not voltage, getting the uh, electric field. Okay. So if you try to integrate the uh, electric field, you'll be involving vectors. And you're, you'll be it will be result to result it will result into three different integrals due to your different directions. For your uh, potential, you only have one integral. Okay. There you go. So example, 
given a circular ring of charge, linear charge density, rho L, determine the potential V at any point on the z-axis. So, first, you integrate that. Okay, your DL is along the path of the ring. So, that's ADV. Okay. So, rho L is the charge density. And uh, your distance between this point to this point, okay? The distance between this point to this point, well, you can get the norm of the distance vector from here to here, which is equal to the square root of a squared plus z squared. And this is now your integral, okay? So solve the integral, well, you just need to uh, integrate it over phi. And since there are no... Uh, terms dependent to phi, all of these are constants with respect to phi, and you can get your potential, potential field expression, this one. The very point far away from the origin, VR may be reduced to a potential field of a point charge. Right? So I've, I've shown that uh, in, in the previous lecture. Where you have a circular, we we get the electric field of a circular ring of charge. Okay? When we uh, let your z be very large compared to a, this expression becomes your point charge form. Okay? so it's also similar to your voltage potential, uh, sorry, voltage field or potential field. Okay? Okay, so do you have any questions? Uh, if you have any questions so far, just leave a comment. Okay. And uh, with that, uh, this concludes the second part of the fourth lecture of Tripoli 23. And uh, let's discuss if you have any questions. Again, just comment or send me an email. Or if you want to meet with me personally, you can set a consultation. Okay. My consultation hours are uh, in the syllabus. And I'll see you when I see you.